I'm gonna talk about a subject that as soon as I say the words, you're gonna be like, oh, I don't need to listen to this. I, I'm fine with this, or I've already heard this, so I don't need to um, keep tuned in. So, but I encourage you to stay tuned in because I thought the same thing, and then I found out how many afflictions in my life were connected to this one very simple, basic subject. And when I started to get healed of it, I started to have personal miracle after personal miracle, and then I started seeing people all around the world getting miracles too in their own lives. And it's the subject of bitterness. <laughs> bitterness, I know you think, oh, I've heard this, I've done this before. Well, I wanna take it to a new level. I want to take you to that place where you're getting healed of ancient roots of bitterness that you perhaps were born with. And I want to show you all the massive things that bitterness can do to us in our lives. I'll just give you a simple example and open up with this scripture from Job 22. Listen carefully. It says this, one dies in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk. His bones are full of marrow and moistening. Another dies in bitterness of soul and never eateth with pleasure. Okay, did you hear the contrast there? It's talking about two people and how they pass on to glory. One passes on holy at ease and quiet. Breasts are full of milk. Bones are full of marrow and moistening. Okay, that means that that person, when they passed on to glory, they were strong. They were full of vitality, full of energy. Uh, they weren't weak. They weren't sick. They weren't dying of some disease or disorder. They, they were able to play with their grandkids. They were able to be active. Their bones were full of marrow and moistening. Then it says how the other man dies. It says another dieth in bitterness of soul. What does that mean? People are dying and they're dying out of their time from disease from diseases, from disorders, from all kinds of issues and problems and sicknesses, okay? Now, God has an appointed time for every man to die. I believe people are dying before their appointed time because they're dying of bitterness of soul. That when we allow ourselves to get bitter or when we're even born with a generational character bent that takes, that causes us to lean towards bitterness in our responses to difficult situations and difficult cir circumstances, that that bitterness can actually cause us to be sick. It can cause us to have issues and die before God's time. We'll, we'll be opposite of the man, the first man that Job is talking about, the man who dies when ease and quiet, his breast full of milk, his bones full of marrow and moistening, dying strong, going strong, going vi full of vitality and vigor till the very end. That's what we want to do. But the reason why we're not, the reason why we're dying before our times is many times it's because we're dying in bitterness of soul. Meaning we've allowed bitterness to control our lives or we're being controlled by an ancient root of bitterness. Now notice it says bitterness of soul. See, bitterness lives in the soul realm. If you're born again, your spirit man is perfect. Your spirit man is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Christ has no bitterness in him. Amen. So where does bitterness carried in our being? It's carried in the soul realm. It's in your mind. You think bitter thoughts, it's in your emotions. You feel bitter, angry, judgmental, critical feelings. It's in our will. We make decisions out of the anger, or the bitterness that we're going through at that moment. Bitterness lives in the soul realm. So we need to get the soul realm healed. And here's the thing, a lot of people can, a lot of people do recognize that they're allowing bitterness to come in. So they repent for it, which is the right thing to do. We're supposed to repent. The Bible says that the blood atoneth for the soul. That's Leviticus 17. So when we speak the blood, when we repent for bitterness, when we forgive people we're bitter at or forgive the situations, then the blood atones for the soul. It washes away the sin that lives in our soul, that bitter sin that lives in our soul. But we also have to start doing what people aren't really doing, and that's release another power that we already carry around with us that lives in our spirit man into our soul realm so we can get healed of the woundedness that comes from the sin of bitterness. What's that power? It's dunamis. When you were born again, Romans 1 talks about it. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, which is the power unto salvation. When you were born again, a power brought you unto, into your saved position in Christ. What is that power? Well, if you look in that scripture in Romans 1, that power is a Greek word called dunamis. 
See, when you're born again, dunamis, it's resurrection power. It comes inside your spirit, resurrects your dead spirit, man, unto eternal life. Okay, and it lives inside there now. You get a tank full of dunamis. Well, one of the meanings of the word dunamis is this, excellence of soul. <laughs> excellence of soul. You have a tank full of soul healing power in you right now. So a lot of times people will repent for being bitter. Hopefully, some people don't. They don't even think they're bitter. But when they do, they'll start to repent for bitter, for bitterness. They'll say, God, I'm sorry, I'm bitter. I forgive the person I'm bitter at. I ask that you cleanse me. But then they stop the process right there. Well, what happens is, is the blood came, they repented, they forgave, the blood came and washed their soul clean of that sin. But that sin can still leave a wound. That Bible talks about how sin wounds us. And that's when you got to spend a little time each day just releasing the dunamis power you already have. Okay, you already have a tank full of dunamis in here. Your spirit man's full of it, and it means excellent of soul. If you feel like bitterness has overcome you, Start repenting for it. Start forgiving the person you're bitter at. And then just put your hand on your belly and go, okay, now <laughs> I release the dunamis power that's in my spirit that I already have because I'm born again in Jesus. And I release it to go into my soul to make me excellent of soul. And then you just sit there and use your faith, your faith and the understanding of the word to just believe that that's exactly what's happening. I've done that simple exercise so many times, and I can't tell you how many times I've gotten healed of all kinds of woundedness, and including wounds that came from bitterness. Amen? Now, we're going to do that in a minute, but I just want to show you how important this is about getting healed of bitterness and what bitterness can do to your life. Okay, people don't realize, they go, oh yeah, so what? So I got a little mad at somebody. So I got a little bitter. Big deal. You know, maybe they deserved it because they're acting stupid or, you know, this situation is intolerable or whatever it is. But you don't realize when you allow yourself to respond like that without repentance and without getting healed, all kinds of sicknesses and diseases can overcome you. Let me just show you a few of them. Remember, number one, Job says one, one dies with marrow and moistening in his bones while the other dies in bitterness of soul. I believe bitterness of soul is killing people before their time. Okay, number two. Just read the, the story in 2 Samuel 2 and 2 Samuel 3. It's a story about Abner who, and Joab. Abner and Joab. Abner was the general who was under Saul. Joab was David's general. These two guys had a little bit of a battle. Okay, what ended up happening is Joab, because he had no choice, he was defending himself, had to kill Abner's brother Abishai. All right, and then what happened is, once that happened, uh, Abner like went crazy. Uh, I mean, Joab went crazy and started to chase down Abner to kill him because he had killed his brother. Now, this is a big battle. Now, remember, these are Israelite tribes fighting Israelite tribes. And what happened is, is the end of this big epic battle and this big chase for Joab to try to kill Abner because Joab had had to kill his brother Abishai. Joab is, uh, Abner is trapped up on a mountain and he looks down at Joab and he shouts to him and he says this. Listen to what he says. He calls out to Joab and he says, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that this will be bitterness in the latter end? So what he was saying to Joab is, Look, I, I know I, I had to kill your brother, okay? But if we keep on battling about this, it's going to end up where it's just total bitterness in the latter end. And as soon as he said that, the war stopped and both sides of the parties left. But it didn't stop for Joab because in his heart, he let the death of his brother fester major bitterness inside of him. Now you may think, well, he had the right to do so. His brother got killed. You know what? Horrible things happen to every single one of us. You may be dealing with something horrible right now. And you may have even blamed a certain person for it happening to you or a certain institution for being the cause of that problem. But how you respond to it can dictate whether or not it wounds your soul and enables you to get sick or even to be attacked by a demonic spirit. What happened was is Joab got bitter and he took bitter revenge out on Abner. In the next chapter in 2 Samuel 3, he tricked Abner into coming to meet with him in the gates of Jerusalem under the guise of a truce. And when Abner showed up, Joab murdered him out of the bitter revenge that was in his heart. And then this is what happened. Afterwards, when David heard about it, 
He said this, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever for the blood of Abner. And then he said a curse. David pronounced a curse upon Joab because Joab had let himself take bitter revenge. And he said this, let it rest on the head of Joab and all his family and let there not fail from the house of Joab. Let not one that has a discharge, that is a leper, that leaneth on the staff, that falleth on the sword, or that lacketh bread. Did you hear that list? Listen to me. This is what happens when we let ourselves take bitter revenge or let ourselves get bitter at anyone or a situation. We can have a curse of a discharge, leprosy, leaning on the staff that's crippling diseases, falling on the sword that's early death, murder, suicide. Or lacking bread, that's your provisions, that's your finances. You see that? All those curses, oh my gosh, came upon Joab because he let himself get bitter. Wow, that's amazing. I remember when God showed me this scripture, and I'm just going to be transparent with you, and I don't care if I look gross or anything else. I know somebody's watching this, that they're going to be appreciative that I shared this very intimate thing with you. I had a bloody discharge for years and years and years and years, like four years. Okay. It was gross. I can't even explain it to you. Um, it was more than just leaking blood. It was a discharge. It was gross looking. It was mucusy looking. It was bloody looking. It was terrible. Okay. I, it, it, it haunted me and it happened like 17 days out of every month for four years. And I couldn't figure out why it was happening. Okay, then God gives me the scripture and he said that I, he told me I had let myself become bitter. See, on the streets, before I was saved, before I was born again, and when I was living as a career criminal, I took bitter revenge on everybody. I was just like Job. Don't mess with me, man, because I'll come and get you. All right, if you take anything of mine, oh, you're on my hit list and I will come and take everything you own. All right, I... I tormented people. I tortured people. I ripped people off. I terrorized people. Okay. I lived to take bitter revenge. I was full of bitterness, possessed by bitterness. And that's all I did on the streets for years and years and years. And the Lord told me that because I lived like that and because I had become controlled completely by bitterness, I had one of the curses that Joab had. Remember the first in his list. When there was a curse put on Joab, the first curse was, let there not be one in the house of Joab that, hath a, that is not without a discharge. Wow. When I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought that this problem that I had, I just thought something was wrong with my body. I just thought something was going on there. What? I never would have imagined that it was because I had bitterness in my soul. But God showed me the connection. Right now, you could be suffering from one of the things on this list. Discharge, leprosy, leaning on the staff, crippling diseases, falling on the sword, lacking bread, your provision, your money, your finances. And it may be, I'm not saying it is, but it may be because you have bitterness of soul. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? This is an important moment. Because we can let ourselves get bitter about all kinds of things. We can let ourselves get bitter at our, our job. Yeah, I'm so tired of going to work at this place. They don't treat me right. They never give me the money I deserve. I was promised a raise and I haven't gotten it. The way my boss talks to me is completely unacceptable. I hate all my coworkers. They're a bunch of idiots. You know, we let ourselves get bitter about things. How are we going to respond to a difficult situation? Do you think everything is always going to be perfect and rosy in your life? No, we're going to suffer trials of many kind, but the Lord says, count it all joy when you suffer persecutions of every kind, because it will develop in you patience so that you will be uh, lacking in perfect, lacking in nothing. All right. How are we responding to our situation? Are you bitter at your spouse? Are you bitter at your children? Have they not come to see you? Are they talking to you the wrong way? Have they taken advantage of you? Are they out on the streets? What have you become bitter about? And then examine, ask the Lord to show you. Ask the Lord to show you, is the bitterness that's in me connected to any of the physical ailments that I'm dealing with or any of the financial issues that I'm going through? It's like the list is so long. I can remember a woman that I knew, a very close friend of mine. She had a fungus growing in her lungs, fungus. And I'm like, 
Where does that come from, God? Where is fungus growing from the lungs? You know, where are fungus growing from the lungs? How does that happen? And the Lord gave me one word. He gave me the word fretting. And I'm like, fretting, okay, where's that? I look it up in the Bible and it was in Leviticus 14. And as I read it, I know, I realized, well, I just got a word from the Lord because it's talking about fungus in the house and what you do when fungus or mold is growing in your house, that you have to scrape it off and then the priest has to come and inspect it and you've got to paint it over. But if the fungus returns, if it comes back, it's called a fretting plague. And I'm like, okay, I know this word's for me because it's about fungus in the house. What does the word fretting, fretting mean? And I look up the word fretting and the guess in this lexicon, it means this, to be bitter, <laughs> to be bitter. The Lord was showing me that my friend, who was an awesome person, an awesome woman of God, had bitterness in her. And that is what was causing this fungus to grow in her lungs. Once she got healed of that bitterness, the fungus went away and it's never returned. Amen? I mean, you would not believe the things. I'm serious. I'm serious, my friends. I'm so serious. Bitterness is causing so many things. I'll, I'll, give, you another, I'll give you another story. I went through a time when I was so weak that my... I couldn't even barely like walk upstairs. I, if I lifted up a box, I, I could barely do it. I'd walk upstairs. I'd have to stop after a few stairs. I was like, I couldn't believe I, I was losing that much strength. And I was like, what is this, God? What is going on? So I'm in a hotel not shortly after that. And I'm getting dressed, getting ready for a meeting because I'm on tour. And I look and I see in this full length mirror because I don't have one at home. So I see in this full length mirror that my muscle tone, my muscles had atrophied so bad on my thighs that I actually had skin hanging off my thighs. I actually had indentation where the muscles were and I looked at that I was so shocked I thought oh my god I must have something seriously wrong with me it's a cancer what is it well the next day when I'm in the plane the Lord explains it to me he goes read numbers five and then he showed me a vision of this glass of iced tea and he says that's what you're drinking and I go okay so I read numbers five and it talks about the woman if she was unfaithful to her husband she went to the priest and she was made to drink this concoction of dirt inside water, and it was called the bitter water that brings the curse. And when she drank the bitter water that brings the curse, if she had sinned against her husband, then two things would happen. Her belly would swell, three things. Her belly would swell, her thigh would rot, and she would be unable to conceive. Did you hear what I said? Her belly would swell, her thigh would rot, and she'd be unable to conceive. You see, when we allow ourselves to get bitter and we drink the bitter water, we're sinning against our heavenly husband. We're sinning against him, our bridegroom. And when we drink that bitter water, the curse of the bitter water can come upon us and it causes our belly to swell and our thigh to rot and, to, and for us to be unable to conceive. God showed me I had this muscle atrophy, this loss of strength because I had allowed bitterness to come in. Then I remembered, as I'm thinking about this, I remembered he showed me a glass of iced tea and he said, that's what you're drinking. And I said, I wonder what that means. And I looked up the word tea and it means a slightly bitter beverage. I was drinking the bitter beverage. I was drinking the bitter water and the curse of the bitter water came upon me and it caused me to lose my strength. You know, I can't tell you how many times I go into a meeting and I ask people, hey, how are you feeling? Um, you know, are you having like some sort of a, mysterious loss of strength and mysterious like muscle atrophy even in your life and like 70 percent of the people in the meeting raise their hand and then I say now the people that just raise their hand how many of you have bitterness in your life that you're bitter at somebody or at a situation and almost all of them raise their hand too see it's connected oh my gosh you know this world is a difficult world to live in. There are so many challenges. The economy is a challenge. Marriages are challenging. Financial situations put pressure on us. Our children, we wanna raise them right. We wanna do the right thing. We wanna make the right choices. But there's so many odds against us with school problems and friend problems with your children and their friends and issues that cause your children to be hurt and you know situations are difficult and if we didn't have Christ we wouldn't be the victors but we do so we are the head and not the tail we are above and not beneath but we have to take every situation that comes at us all the difficulties at work every day all the pressures all the decisions I'm preaching to myself right now 
I'm telling you, I'm preaching to myself right now. And we have to respond out of joy and not bitterness. I'm preaching to myself. Today was like one of the most horrible days ever for me personally. Okay. And I had to remind myself, I'm like, wow, you're going to about to preach on bitterness. You better get it together, Kate. You better act and respond like you know the Bible wants you to act and respond and not let this bitterness take a root inside your soul because you know what it feels good to get mad our soul likes to get mad our soul likes to go oh that person they did this and that to me oh that that whole situation is just out of control oh you know I, I don't even want to do this anymore we could say that and be justified if it weren't for the fact that Christ in us tells us not to do that, that the Holy Spirit is telling us not to respond like that. And for the fact that when we do, we're just opening ourselves up to getting sick, to getting disease, to leaning on the staff, having a discharge, having our thigh rot, having our thigh rot, losing our strength, being sucked up to nothing to where we're like the man who dies in bitterness of soul. This is big. This is big. You know, I still have my days. I still have my days where I have to fight it, where I have to fight being bitter. But you know what? I used to be controlled by it every single day. There was no fighting. I was just under the control of bitterness completely. And I've worked on it and gotten layer after layer after layer healed. And I'm telling you what, now I have those moments when things happen, but all in all, I, I feel a whole new level of peace. And you can too. And I've had many, many miracles happening because of myself, God healing myself of bitterness. And you can too. Even losing weight. Remember it said that when the woman drank the bitter water and the curse of the bitter water came upon her, it said her, her belly would swell and her thigh would rot. I have lost weight instantly, supernaturally, like three or four times by just getting healed of bitterness. And it happened instantly. Like I'd have my hands on my stomach like this. Next thing you know, 60 seconds later, my hands would fall down and I had just weighed myself, weigh myself again after the prayer and bam, lost the weight instantly just by repenting and being healed of bitterness. Put your hands on your belly right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I repent for my bitterness, for anything I felt today so that I can powerfully minister to the people watching. And I thank you, Lord, that you're healing me and you're healing everyone who's watching right now. So let's just start by repenting for bitterness while you're watching this webcast. Just say, Lord Jesus, I do not want to be bitter anymore. I want to be free. So I repent of every bitter thought that I've been thinking. I repent of every bitter emotion I've been feeling. I repent of every bitter word that I said to somebody or about a situation. I repent out of making decisions out of bitterness. You know, some people quit a good job because um, they got so bitter that they made a bad decision with their will, because their will was being controlled by that bitterness inside of them. So if you've made a decision like that, repent for it right now. And I, and just continue praying with me, just saying, I forgive the person or the situation that I am bitter at. In fact, right now I'm gonna ask Holy Spirit, see, I feel the power right now, the power just hit. I'm going to ask Holy Spirit to tell you, who are you bitter at? What situation is having you be bitter? Is it work? Is it home? Is it money situations? Are you blaming someone for something? Is the insurance company not giving you a settlement? Did you get hit by a, a drunk driver or somebody caused an accident and you're bitter at them because you're still sick? You're going to be healed now. Just let Holy Spirit tell you right now, who are you bitter at? What are you bitter about? Just close your eyes and receive it. Receive the revelation. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God. As you hear it, as you get that person's name or that situation, just start putting the blood on it. Just start putting the blood on it. Just start repenting for being bitter. Start forgiving. Start releasing the blood over that situation. Let's get rid of the sin first. That's what we're doing right now. We're getting rid of the sin of bitterness, and then we're going to get rid of the wound. Right now. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. I feel the presence. I'm not just saying that. I feel it coming down right now in the studio. Just for 10 more seconds, just, just say, I, I received the blood, I received the washing, I received the forgiveness, I received God's grace, I received that cleansing of that sin of bitterness right now in Jesus' name, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I see a spirit, and it's causing weakness, it's causing muscle atrophy. It's causing the loss of strength. It's a feeble spirit. I'm about to rebuke it, but let's get that wound healed first because it will have the right to be there until we get that wound healed. Now, put your hand on your belly or your stomach and you have a tank full of dunamis inside of you. You already have it. You don't have to work it up. There's nothing you have to do except just believe it and know it. And now command it right there in your house. Command it to come out of your spirit. Say, come out of my spirit, dunamis. Come out. Go to my soul, Dunamis, right now and make me excellent of soul. Okay, I feel that power right now. I feel it coming out right now. Okay, do it again. Say, I command Dunamis to come out of my spirit and go into my soul and heal me of every wound of bitterness now in Jesus' name. Keep on praying with me. Say, I'm full of Dunamis. My spirit man is full of dunamis. It never runs out. It's a tank full. I got it when I was born again. And now I release it to saturate my soul and my body. I command it to go to every wound of bitterness inside of me now. In Jesus' name. Now 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 in the name of Jesus. Ooh, thank you, God. I decree it right now. They're being filled with dunamis. They're becoming excellent of soul. The bitterness, the bitterness, the bitterness is being healed right now in Jesus' name. I feel the power right now. Right now in Jesus' name. You know when I did this? My, uh, my muscle tone grew back within 30 days and I didn't do any exercising or anything different. It just did it supernaturally. Grew back, skin tightened up and everything else. That was over a year and some odd, I think a half ago, year and a half ago. And it happened and filled in. And you know, a friend of mine had a hole in her thigh as big as a fist. She came over and showed it to me one day. She actually showed it to me and I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't know what it was at the time. I go, what is that? She said, what is that? I said, I don't know. And then a few months later, the Lord showed me about how when you drink the bitter water, it causes the curse of the bitter water to come upon you and your thigh to rot. So I called her and I told her, and for like three or four months, me and her, we worked on bitterness together. We just kept on praying and praying. And the last time I saw her, it had grown in except for a tiny little bit of a, a little bump inside, but the whole fist um, hole in her thigh had grown in without her doing any exercise or anything else to make it grow in. And it happened just because she got healed of bitterness. 
So right now I decree you are being healed of bitterness. You're being healed right now. And that muscle atrophy, that thigh rot, those discharges, the leaning on the staff, I break every curse right now in the name of Jesus. I break the curse of leaning on the staff. I break the curse of leprosy. I break the curse of lacking of bread. I break the curse of falling on the sword. I break every single curse that Joab had. I break every single curse that's in Numbers 5, the swelling of the belly, the thigh rot, and the inability to conceive. I break those curses right now. I break those curses right now and I remove the spirit of Delilah. The Delilah, that spirit means, that name means feeble. Remember, she stole Samson's strength. I actually saw her in a vision. She was swimming in this pool of bitter water and I was in the pool with her. And the Lord said, get out of that pool. You're swimming in the bitter water with Delilah. And when I found out her name meant feeble and she stole Samson's strength, I realized there was a spirit on me. I speak to that spirit right now. I have dominion over that spirit right now. I break you off of everybody that's watching in the name of Jesus. You will not continue to make people feeble. You will not continue to steal their strength to make their thigh rot in the name of Jesus now, now. Now, I hear dozens of people are being healed right now. Dozens, dozens, of, right now. Right now, you're gonna start seeing your strength come back. You're gonna start seeing your muscles return. You're gonna start seeing everything, your more vitality, more energy. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit, loose. Loose the people in Jesus' name. There it goes. Thank you, God. Mm. I heard I'm just telling you what the Lord's telling me. I heard many of you, you're, it's going to turn on a dime for you. It's going to turn on a dime for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This has been a, this is a great moment. I love doing these webcasts because so many people can get healed just by tuning in. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so then now let me look at the time. All right, we went a little long, but I'm good with that because that was ministry and you got free. And I'm expecting the testimonies. I'm expecting you guys to do testimonies. Hey, you'd also know that we like to do selfie testimonies. What that is, is you take your phone. I wish I had my phone with me, but I don't. And you actually turn it the long ways and you face it towards yourself and you do like a minute or a minute and a half of a testimony about your healing. And then you send it to us, you text it to us. And Amy, how do they text it to us? Selfies at? Selfies at? katiesouza.com. Email it. Email it. <clears throat> I'm sorry, don't text it. Email it. We're going to have a, a selfie show where we have all the selfies featured on our program, Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. Okay, so make sure you send us your selfie. And I think if you, if you miss those instructions and you're not sure, go back to the website. And I think it's like there's a little thing that says selfies. You can click on that. It tells you how to do a selfie and how to send the selfie in. Okay, and if you haven't watched the show, Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous, please, 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 Go on the website. If you don't see it on TV, you can see it on our website. And there's prayers just like the ones we did just now at the end of every program so you can get healed through watching the broadcast. Okay, let's hear a question. We have a lot, we have a lot of questions. Okay. Um, how can you stop bitterness completely from happening again? Okay. How can The question is, how can you stop bitterness from completely happening again? All right, well, what what is... For me, what helped me, and I still have my challenges, um, is I had a bitter bent. I had a bent in me towards bitterness. I was born with it. It was generational. The word iniquity is the word the Bible uses to describe generational sin. But the meaning of the word iniquity is the word bent. See, when you're born with bitterness in your soul, because it was passed down to you through your bloodline, then you bend towards that as your natural response to difficult situations. And so it seems like you, it's really hard to break out of the pattern of bitterness because it's so ingrained in your soul. So just begin to ask God, you know, maybe do a little fasting, just ask God what to do, but ask him to specifically not just take out the bitterness of the situation you're dealing with currently, like maybe your boss or, you know, your spouse or something, but to heal a generational root. So just ask him to go back in your bloodline to the source of bitterness in your soul and just keep that as your constant prayer and you'll see he'll start to honor it and pretty soon you'll feel the freedom coming of that. And then if a situation arises, like for me, it rose today, oh, I felt like I just wanted to, ah, right? And so I just, I just, in my mind, I, I, I stopped my mind from thinking about it. 
and I just start thinking about, uh, you know, I love you, God. I, I forgive that person. I repent for being bitter. I just start taking control of my mind and my thoughts and I start decreeing that and, and start to just say even out loud, you know, I'm counting it all joy. Uh, you know, that's my new catchphrase. I'm counting it all joy. You know, and just begin to counteract the assault by controlling your mind, keeping it captive, and by saying decrees to the opposite. I'm full of joy. I'm full of peace. I'm full of self-control. I am not bitter. I am not angry. I forgive that person. I repent myself. Just things like that. Okay, go ahead, Amy. Okay, um... Generational chronic lung infections, is that rooted in bitter, bitterness? It could possibly be. Oh, okay. So the question is, um, generational lung issues, chronic. Uh, chronic lung, could it be bitterness? You know, it could be because I have just seen endless things connected to bitterness. What you do is, I'm not going to guess, get a word from the Lord. Just pray in tongues a little bit after the broadcast is done. Pray in tongues and then... Um, Ask the Lord to just give you a scripture, to put a scripture in your mind or give you one word. Like how he gave me the word fretting. Fretting, I was like, what's, what's that mean? And then when I look it up, it means bitterness. So ask him to do that and then that will bring clarity to that issue and you'll know exactly how to pray. Okay, what else do you have, Amy? Okay, um, have you ever prayed with someone with mercury poisoning? Um, yes, we did Would once. Yeah, okay, so the question is, have we ever prayed for someone with mercury poisoning? We, I've seen one mercury poisoning healing. It happened in um, Richmond, Richmond, um, Virginia. And I don't remember exactly what I was teaching on, but I'll tell you this, I know it was about the soul. So there might be like something in the soul that enables that mercury poisoning to stay in the system because the Bible says that you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So a lot of times diseases like that are able to linger because there's an opening in the soul realm. So just ask God again, do as I instructed the last person, pray in tongues, you know, get clarity. Um, put the noise out of your mind, maybe even worship for a while and ask the Lord to give you one word or a scripture to clarify, is it your soul? And then if it is, there's tons of resources about how to heal the soul on our website and our program, Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous, or in any of our resources, including the resource that you might see up on the screen right now, which is Live Free, Escaping the Trap of Bitterness of Soul. It comes with a really good soak too. It takes you through all the different kinds of bitterness that was in the Bible. And so I think it's a very important tool for people to use. So get your word and then find out where the source of that's coming from. Okay, Amy. Um, there's several people on here that are having issues with um, weight loss, um, weight gain, extreme weight gain, obesity, and also bulimia. Okay. Have, so. All right, so Amy's um, saying that there's many people online right now that are talking about problems with weight gain, um, bulimia, even weight, uh, not able to get weight loss. You know, honestly, that's a big, huge topic, but a lot of it is connected to the soul. You know, the word appetite in the Bible means the soul. When we see the word appetite, we think, oh, that's referring to my physical appetites, that I'm hungry for a hamburger right now or this or right now or that. But it actually isn't just that. The word appetite literally means the desires and passions and those things that are in our soul. It means the soul, which means our appetites are coming from our soul. See, our soul is hungry. Our soul is hungry to be loved, to be comforted, to be free, to feel peace. And a lot of times when we don't feel that, because we're wounded, either by bitterness or something else, we'll use food to bring comfort. Or shopping, or you know, excessive t television watching, of bad programming, or you know, un unholy worldly entertainment. You know, our soul is hungry, it's looking for comfort, and we use stuff like food and shopping and things like that to bring that comfort. Okay, and so and then also that creates weight problems, it creates issues like that. And also when the soul is wounded, you know, it's like, gosh, okay, opening up a bag of tricks here. Okay. When the soul is wounded, it allows demonic oppression to come upon, uh, upon us. I mean, the woman bowed over with the spirit of infirmity. Remember her 18 years bowed over by a spirit? What enabled that spirit to bow her over? Well, the, it said it was a spirit of infirmity. That word infirmity means weakness and infirmity of the body and of the soul. 
meaning she had a, a wounded area in her soul that was allowing a spirit to literally bend her spine. Well, what does that have to do with weight loss and weight gain and all this other stuff? Well, if you have a wounded area in your soul, it's controlling your appetites, making you eat, making you have no control over your food, but it could also be allowing a spirit to literally prevent you from, from losing weight and a spirit to literally cause you to gain weight. And people go, oh, ho, ho, whatever, Kate, you're telling me that a demon can make me fat? Yes, I am. If, do you think a demonic spirit can bring sickness and disease upon you? Do you think it can cause cancer? Well, then the same way, I don't know what the process is. I don't know how it works. But the same way they can do that is the same way they can prevent you from losing weight, just like they prevent you from getting well and, and even cause you to gain weight. I've had many times when spirits have come and actually spoken to me and told me, oh, you're hungry, you need to eat more, you just ate something salty, now eat something sweet, you know, uh, that wasn't uh, filling enough, now you need to have a dessert or something like that. I mean, I didn't realize that those were spirits talking to me until God showed me it one day. I was so ravenously hungry, I kept on stuffing anything in my face, including like expired food from my cabinet, you know, and, and then I was like, God, why do I feel so ravenously hungry? And he showed me a spirit following me around, talking to me, telling me to eat. See, the devil's used food from the beginning. He used food to cause the fall of the entire human race. Don't even think he's not still using that strategy to try to kill us. More people die of obesity-related diseases today than cancer. Okay, look, soul food is a great resource that you can get that talks about that. Get healed of bitterness. Okay, your giving has to do with, with weight gain and weight loss. Um, you should get soul food. It'll tell you that question. And I think there might even still be a web stream up on my site that is... Um, um, what is it titled? I don't know. Is it it's still Healing there? The Healing the Void. Go to the web stream, Healing the Void on the website. And if it's still up there, well, those are three sessions that'll give you freedom. So check those out. Okay. And there's prayers and activations and everything. Okay, Amy, what do you got? Okay. There's several people that have really bad skin conditions and skin diseases. Mm. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it. Some of it is brought about by, oh, I'm sorry. This, the question is, many people have um, skin diseases and disorders. I'm seeing that a lot. Okay, I myself am on the brink of a major breakthrough for that too. I actually had some level of breakthrough already. And I know some of it's a spirit. I actually had, I commanded a spirit to leave one day and I actually felt energy flowing through my body. The Bible talks about Joab when he took bitter revenge upon Abner by killing him, murderous revenge. And one of the curses that was on him was leprosy. So bitterness has stuff to do with it. And also idolatry. Remember the story of Naaman, Naaman the um, Syrian. He had leprosy and he got healed when he went and dipped in the Jordan seven times. Okay. Now what caused his leprosy? Well, it says that he was a noble man that he was a great man. I mean, the Bible like brags on him. So what was the problem? Well, he does mention at the end of the story, one thing very interesting to Elijah. He says, look, I've been healed now. I want to take some dirt from Israel so I can take it back to my homeland so I can worship the real God that I know is the true God now. And that's God almighty. But will you forgive me if I do this one thing? And that is, as part of my job, I have to go in with my master into the temple of Rimon and I think it was Rimon and bow the knee and, to him every day while my master worships because that's part of my job. And Elijah said, OK, yeah, you can do that because I know where your heart is really now. So it just shows me that once upon a time before he encountered God and got healed of his leprosy, that he was an idolater. So when we have stuff as I, in, you know, in our lives that's idolatry, it can cause these skin diseases. And you think, well, what's that? Well, I mean, you know, I had stuff in my life that was idolatry. I used to spend a fortune on, on skin stuff. You know, it's like, you know, God can do it supernaturally. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy products. God wants you to have stuff. He wants you to live a life, a comfortable life and a life abundant, but maybe you're spending too much on trying to fix the problem. Maybe we need to ask God, what is the root of this problem? I mean, he will tell us if we get quiet, worship him and he'll give us wisdom. James says when we ask for wisdom, it will be given to us. And I also remember, and this is my last one, as I had a, a rash on the front of my calves for many, many years, from, it was a horrible rash. It would raise up. It was terrible. It was red. It was itchy. It was painful. And one day the Lord showed me it was what the Bible calls the Egyptian botch. 
So I just prayed for everything, you know, in my soul that was in common with that to be healed and it went away. So there is a few different things, but here's the main bottom point. A lot of skin disorders come from the soul. How do I know that? Because the Bible says when the man, that there was a man who was full of leprosy and he came to Jesus to be healed and Jesus healed him. Now what caused that man's leprosy? The Bible says he was full of leprosy. That word full, if you look it up, go ahead and you look it up in the Strong's, it means to be completely permeated in the soul. To be completely permeated in the soul. Meaning there was, his soul was leprous. What was in his soul was causing the leprosy. So Father, right now, I just pray for everyone that's having a skin disorder right now. And I command healing for their soul in Jesus' name. I command that if they're full of leprosy, or if they have idolatry in their life, or if there's the Egyptian botch, or the boil, or any other issue, or the curse, the it says that that Joab would have somebody in his family would have leprosy because of his bitter revenge. That if there's bitterness that is causing the leprosy, the skin disorder, that you would give revelation, and that you would heal their soul with your blood and your dunamis, and that you would do a miracle for them, and you would rid them of that plague in the name of Jesus now. I decree it and I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we have time for one more question. What is it, Amy? It is many people who are dealing with um, financial issues and are desperate for financial breakthrough. Okay, right. So the question is, is that lots of you are dealing with financial issues. Honestly, honestly, honestly. If you've been giving, tithing, and doing everything you're supposed to do, which I believe probably almost, probably the majority of you are, and if you're not, then that's a basic teaching. Get over it and start giving, okay? But I'm sure that most of you are doing that. And you're thinking, wow, I'm giving, I'm tithing, I'm doing everything I can. What is it, God? Remember what the Bible says. You will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. There could be something in the soul realm that is preventing you from prospering. Okay, now I know that I have been, my husband and I have been extremely blessed, but it happened, our blessings happened really after we started getting prosperity of soul. So again, again, just, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're going after financial breakthrough, set your face to receive it by getting in the presence, you know, do your worship every day and just say, God, you know what? Speak to me through your word. Show me what it is in my soul that's preventing me from prospering and then get it healed so that I can prosper and be in health even as my soul is prospered. You know, Ephesians 3.20 says this, that God does this super abundantly above and beyond all that we could ask or imagine according to the power that's at work in us. Okay, now, did you hear that? God wants to do this super abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever, ever ask or imagine. That includes everything, your healing, your, your marriage, your children, and your finances. Okay, but it happens when this happens. Ready? He does it super abundantly according to the power that's at work in you. Okay, that word power there is the word dunamis. So he's saying, I do the super abundant according to the power of the dunamis that's at work in you. Meaning that dunamis is what's going to enable you to have the super abundant, but you got to put it to work. Every day, just spend a few minutes while you're in the shower saying, I'm full of dunamis. I'm excellent of soul. I've got a tank full. It's coming out of me. It's going into my soul. It's healing every wound. I'm going to prosper and be in health even as my soul is prospered. Put it to work. Put that dunamis to work. And you're going to see it. You know what another meaning of the word dunamis is? Listen, the power and influence that comes with riches and wealth. Did you hear that? Go look it up in the Strong's. That's another, the second or third meaning of dunamis. The power and influence that comes with riches and wealth. Put that dunamis to work in you and God will do the super abundantly above and beyond all that you could ever ask or imagine. Okay, we're so out of time. I just love you guys so much. Yes? Okay, I'm just going to close it out tonight. Thank you so much, God. Everyone here has a cry on their heart. They have a cry. They need something, and you know what? You're a good God. You're a good God, and you answer the cry of your children. You say, ask, and you will receive. Knock, the door will be open. They're like the persistent widow, God. They keep on saying, God, help me. God, help me. God, help me with this issue. And 
it says that even the unrighteous judge finally helped them. You are a righteous judge. So how much more will you help your children who are in need? So I know that as they're crying out to you, God, you're going to give them revelation. You're going to show them what the issue is and you're going to bring breakthrough and healing and the miraculous power that only you can give us. We receive it all in Jesus name.